It is the Oasis service for April the 8th. Pastor Mark here greeting everybody on this Wednesday evening. As you know, the Centers of Disease Control refined their mask-wearing uh, suggestions, and I'm following that lead in protecting my loved ones and my staff by wearing a mask. My mask has been positioned by our very own John Moran. He gave me great details as to how to adjust and fit the mask. And isn't it wonderful to know that my great partner in crimes against the devil, John Moran, is once again advocating for my well-being and the effectiveness of my ministry as your leader with his wonderful coaching. And with that stated, let that be an example that we are here loving you and loving each other and having fun even through the incredible challenges that are before us. And I'm glad you've tuned in for our Oasis service here on the 8th of April. As I greet you tonight, I do so with the realization that we are being told that this week, the days we're living and the days ahead of us are going to be some of the most critical in terms of cases and in many cases deaths as a result of this virus. But within that, there are coming glimpses of hope. As a pastor, I'm just like every other pastor. I'm caught between a rock and a hard place, just as we're caught between a rock and a hard place as a culture. I explained a couple of weeks ago that the nature of the disease requires a certain course of action that is debilitating toward our economy. And we process through that. We're seeing that tension between the CDC and our uh, presidential administration on a regular basis, and it's understandable. The same tension exists for those of us who are the clergy, because we are reaching, trying to reach a constituency base of church family and beyond who need and deserve comfort and encouragement. You've heard the old saying, it's every pastor's job to uh, comfort the afflicted, but it's also our job to afflict the comfortable. And here we are in Holy Week, which is precisely that week at the crescendo of Lent where afflicting the comfortable becomes a priority for us. And yet, that's always a difficult thing to bring a prophetic message into our culture. We always... Uh, are going to resist when our toes get stepped on. But that's what the Lenten season is supposed to do. And Holy Week is the crescendo uh, of the Lenten season. And because of the COVID epidemic, we really haven't had the chance to focus a lot on Lent. So tonight is going to be a night, even in the midst of this peak, that we have some encouragement. This is a night to comfort the afflicted so that Tomorrow night and Friday night can be those more reflective, soul-searching, afflict the comfortable, so to speak, appropriate messages that prepare us for the joy of Easter that is coming. So welcome to our Oasis service tonight. This is our sign uh, that exists in our hallway every Wednesday to greet our people and direct them into the sanctuary. Two weeks ago, I returned a worship format to the otherwise midweek update, and I'm not sure I communicated that well to you as the church or to our staff, so we're going to uh, post this online just the way we always did our Oasis services, and uh, that'll be back as our Wednesday offering. And tonight, we're going to worship through music and uh, a brief midweek message let me first deal with some business. Thank you for all of your love and support. I'm going to highlight that during the message here a little bit later. Remember that Maundy Thursday will be streamed live tomorrow night uh, at 7 o'clock, and I'm speaking here to you on Wednesday, the 8th of April. So uh, Maundy Thursday and will run from 7 uh, until we're finished with the service. Have your communion elements ready at home, and as I walk us through uh, that Maundy Thursday, Last Supper, traditional meal. Good Friday will also run at 7 o'clock. These sermons will be archived. Services will be archived. 
and uh, you can watch them later as well. And then Easter Sunday, we'll be streaming again, 9 a.m. and 11, 11 a.m. with the best Easter service we can provide during these times of challenge and limitation. Uh, I'm so proud. In fact, let me just hold that until we get into the message because I want to uh, offer some words of encouragement and affirmation. Let us continue our service with prayer. Then I got a great song to tell you about. Come Holy Spirit, as we worship here midweek, the days we've been told about and warned about have come. Too many are sick, too many are dying. It is frightening and demoralizing, but yet in the midst of this, there is a ray of hope that maybe the worst may be coming to an end. We cling to that and we cling to you. And I lift up everyone at every level, from those who are dying and have lost loved ones, to those who are sick, to those who've lost their jobs, to those who are financially displaced, tension in the homes, hard times adjusting to what we've been asked to do. I pray your blessing of peace and patience, of trust and hope upon us all. May we pause to reflect on your indescribable love that loves us so great you don't come and fix it, but you validate us by working in and through us from leadership to the ordinary to bring about transformation. And maybe that's happening right before our eyes. Bless us as we worship tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Our band is going to be led tonight by our very own vocalist, Carson Oberchrome, in singing the song Indescribable as a part of our Oasis worship for tonight. Revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique In the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable Uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. Has told every lightning bolt where it should go, or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Who oh, imagine the sun and give swords to his light? Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom. Indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful. Untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. Indescribable, 
uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by me. You are amazing, God. Incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me. From the very first chapter of the book of Ephesians, hear these words. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are also faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings from the heavenly places. For this reason, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, words of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians, the church at Ephesus, singing praises to them in the beginning greeting and salutation of the letter to the Ephesians. We know that Paul was a better writer than he was speaker. We know that Paul was a very bright and gifted apostle and saint after his conversion that we talked about on Palm Sunday. But Paul was also smart enough to know that a little PR work can help set up the message of any letter. But that reality does not take away from the fact that Paul was legitimately encouraging and bragging on the people at Ephesus. They weren't perfect. But he was affirming their faithfulness. And that's kind of what I want to do tonight as your friend and your pal and your pastor here in the midst of Holy Week. In the greeting, I outline the challenge of the balance that Holy Week brings. Holy Week, in normal circumstances, is a tough week of toe-stepping theological and biblical challenge where we're all asked to do some inventory in where our human nature parallels that that betrayed our Lord Jesus, took him to the cross, mocked his death, and went on without any awareness of what had been done. There's some of that in all of us. Lent brings us to Holy Week, and it's a time that we do that. The coronavirus plague has had the same effect. It's caused us to pause and reflect on what's important. And hopefully, if we're going to come out of this stronger and deeper on the other side, we're going to do this same kind of Holy Week and Lenten inventorying within the context of the virus. And it's my job as pastor as I did on Palm Sunday and will again a little bit tomorrow night and especially on the Good Friday service to do the hard work. So tonight is the perfect occasion to lead into that with some good news, some thanksgiving and some encouragement that helps keep the balance in place between legitimate needs of being affirmed and encouraged as well as being challenged. And Paul's letter allows us to do that. There's a wonderful outline for this about discipleship. We talk about deepened spirituality as shared in discipleship on a regular basis. And later on this spring, I'm going to go through how this simple little introduction to this letter gives us an outline for discipleship. But right now, let's talk about encouragement. 
Paul is offering encouragement to the Ephesians for this reason, and I left some of it out there in chapter 1. You can go back and reread some of the source material for his thanksgiving. Uh, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus toward all the saints, and do not cease in giving thanks for you. I have found that same discipline very helpful in these recent weeks. As I walk and live in the roller coaster of emotion between grief, worry, hope, optimism, doubt, faith, perhaps you've had a similar journey as mine. Some days, some moments are better than others. But as I've told you before, the Spirit keeps coming and working on me in spite of my failings. And I just want to run through some encouraging things that I've noticed that I would like to share with you that may not be coming to us as we are bombarded through the publicity and the news accounts of all that's going on in our society. But sneaking through all of the alarm, all of the criticism, all of the negativity, all of the accusations and the back and forth criticism that comes from Uh, one extreme toward the other. Have you noticed the American spirit at work yet again? How many times in history have Americans risen to the occasion through incredible challenges of the Great Depression, World War I, World War II, the other wars that have come? Our space age technology sending people into space, into the moon, just to name a few. And here in the midst of all of the negativity, do you realize how quickly in a matter of days and weeks that we've seen equipment emerge, manufactured in many ways from the private sector? I know it's not perfect. I know there are still issues, but so much has been done that never really makes the headlines to bring about the manufacturing and the delivery and the use of things like tests for the virus and ventilators and equipment in hospitals and uh, retired nurses and doctors coming back in, risking their lives along with the other frontline medical personnel. What tremendous spirit and encouragement that should bring to all of us. And I say that because our perspective is how we move through this is so incredibly important. Jump back with me in the Bible, back to uh, the book of Numbers. And remember the story of Caleb and Joshua when Moses was near the end of his journey and uh, they were reaching finally the promised land and Moses sent Caleb and Joshua out ahead to spy out the promised land? After 40 days, they returned from spying the land, says chapter 13 of Numbers. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh, and they brought back word to them and to all the congregation. And they told them, We came to the land which you sent to us, and it flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit, just like they'd been told. Yet, uh uh-oh, yet in verse 28. The people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negev and the Hittites. And they paint this horrific picture of opposition that caused them basically to want to turn around, and a dialogue ensues. But it says, Caleb quieted the people before Moses, and said, let us go up at once and occupy the land, for we are well able to overcome it. And of course, in history, that's what occurs. Moses never gets to go with them, but the other leaders follow. The perspective that Caleb offered was in such contrast 
to the defeatist negativity that all of us are confronted with every day, it captures the spirit that Paul offers later in Ephesians that we need to employ here during the crunch of this big challenge. And taking a look at the example of this American spirit and what has happened is just an example of that. Think about the encouraging leadership we've seen not only in Texas but around the country on the local and state level. Some crying for a federal mandate in lockdown, but uh, our states have been empowered in a great federalist spirit to allow for this to go. And it hasn't been perfect, but there's been so much good that has come. I look around our church. I see a spirit of our people that is patient and kind, hopeful, resilient and tough. I'm experiencing it as I make calls to our people. I'm experiencing in what I don't hear. So many of my colleagues have had people that have just been furious and angry that they can't have church on Sunday. And uh, we don't have a computer or we don't understand why this is happening. And yet our church has adapted and been patient. And it's not only a, an a gift of the wonderful staff and production capabilities that we have. It's a testament to the spirit of the good people of our church. Do you realize that last Sunday, for example, on Palm Sunday, the sermon I preached about uh, the danger of arrogance in our culture and how it's a human issue, that service, like many others we've done during this lockdown, reached people in North Tarrant County, Western Tarrant County, Parker County, through a family connection all the way to suburban Chicago and through a connection that had nothing to do with the membership or staff of our church reached uh, homes in Iowa where people who had found us not a part of our church were so impressed by what they found they shared it with their loved ones out of state. We've even had a financial contribution come as the result of this spread of our online abilities. That's just incredible and exciting. The, the minimal, I almost want to say absence, but it's minimal criticism and negativity that have come. Think about this rub I've described of the need to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Not everything we do is going to scratch every itch, so to speak, or meet every need every time. And yet the minimal negativity has just been incredible. And yet the overwhelming complimentary spirit that has come to me and to others has been so encouraging. It speaks to the character of our people at St. John the Apostle. Think of the spirit of Americans who have, by the vast majority, in spite of the headlines, accepted and trusted our nation's leadership and respected the social distancing and the shelter at home. Traffic is down. And as a result, the estimates that we've seen on the graphics of the uh, predictions of deaths and infliction rate are actually beginning to be reported as better than we thought and less than what we were afraid of because of the American spirit of allowing this very difficult social distancing to have a powerful impact on what we're doing. We're not there yet. I realize that we got a long way to go, but there's so much to be encouraged about. And we're going to see this same spirit felt in our culture as a restlessness emerges and we're ready to find ways to get on with life again but I think you're going to see a patience in the pacing of that that is also going to be helpful and encouraging so this is my good news message of some of the things that I'm giving thanks for on a regular basis still acknowledging that this is a legitimate human crisis and that history is being rewritten. But it's going to be faithfulness and all of the qualities that we've talked about tonight that help us rewrite that history that will get us to the other side where life can be good and right even if the norm is a little bit different. We'll get there and we'll adjust. So grace and peace for this Wednesday. Let's get ready to go deep 
and sober for these next two nights. And we're going to celebrate Easter in just a few days. Amen.